Welcome back to wagertalk.com. We're going to talk a little handicapping with Brian Leonard. Brian, we're at the, let's say, horse racing term. We're at the three-quarter pole uh, heading for home of the college football season. November is always a unique month in handicapping. Um, I've always felt that October was the, the sweet spot, the purest month of handicapping because, you know, September, you your stats and everything that you're looking at is a little bit inflated because teams are playing a lot of weak sisters of the mm -hmm. poor, so it inflates numbers on certain teams. But when you get to October, you're into conference play, and then the numbers and the stats even themselves out. And when you're in October, everybody still has hope. They're still thinking they can get to that six right. games, get to the bowls. But when you hit November, it's reality time. Some of the teams, their season's done. They finally realize they suck, and they're going to toss the towel. Other teams have other problems. They got the pressure of trying to get into the Final Four, teams that are trying to stay undefeated and such. So I got to ask you, do you change any of your handicapping when the calendar flips to the month of November? Yeah, I do a lot of changes. I throw out a lot of things that happen earlier in the season because teams change, especially if they have new coaches in the system. Um, as the season goes on, they can install more plays, especially if they're coming off of a bye. I love to play new coaches coming off of a bye. Uh, and you see that they have a lot of success in that regard. The other teams don't have anything to prepare for because they haven't seen that on tape. Uh, so that's something you have to take a look at. Another thing is the way, the style these teams play. Take a look at Texas Tech. Every year, Texas Tech is a bar burner early in the season. And then near the end of the season, when it gets cold, when they get into conference play, they don't seem to play as well. So the way they play works well against people who don't prepare for it, but against the teams in their conference that see it every year, it starts to wear down as the year goes on, and you can fade Texas Tech every year the last few games of the season. Now, Brian, we have, with the championship series, with the four teams getting in, uh, more teams are still live. It's like adding the extra wild card in baseball. It creates excitement all the way down to the, the final week of the season. But some of these teams that are locked in at the, you know, the top already, do you see a tendency where some of them start to play a little tighter? You, you sometimes get these teams, and obviously if they're in the top four, they're going to be favorites in their games, where you see a coach play a little more conservative and maybe not take as many chances, play not to lose instead of playing to win, and that's always a bad formula when you're laying points. It is, but on the other side, there's guys that will run up a score thinking that that's going to make them look better. Every game, the style points. Yeah, everything's you got to take it on an individual basis to see what the coaches have done in the past. For example, Alabama this year at home, I don't think they've covered yet. Mm -hmm. They're just getting the win over and they're just going on to the next game. Uh, so every coach is going to play it a little bit differently. But uh, you, you could, there's, you know, the seasons, you break them down. It's like in basketball, uh, college basketball. You have your non-conference, you have your conference, you have your conference tournaments, and then you got your tournament. And I think in football, you need to break that down a little bit, too, and see how the teams have done lately in, in uh, your end-of-the-year handicapping as opposed to the teams that looked really good early in the season. Now, one of my favorite angles late in the season like this, and you know, we've talked about it many times on our videos and podcasts and stuff, is the dream crusher. When you get to November, when you lose that first game, it is more devastating than if you lose – your first loss the first week of October because a team like Alabama has time to get themselves worked back into position if they lose a game early. But if you lose a game in November, it, you know, you're generally going to drop out of the pitcher and you've got to hope for somebody else to fall too for you to get yourself back in there. So when a team does lose that first time, I think there's a major, major carryover effect in the next game that they generally – you know, because they're still a good team, they're going to be laying a lot of points. I think there's value going against those teams. I think it depends on what the team's goal was coming into the season. If it's a Baylor, if it's an Ohio State, something like that is one thing. Temple lost last week. Mm -hmm. Temple's not a team that thought they were going to play in the national championship. They could still win their conference. So I don't think that's going to affect them. But once again, everything, you just have to take the whole of everything. Every team is different than every other. And, you know, we've already seen Central Florida throw in the towel. The coach quit on them. Now the players are quitting on the coach. Keep an eye on things like that as the season goes on. All right, great stuff. Appreciate you sharing some of your uh, handicapping with us. And, uh, guys, don't forget, at wagertalk.com, if you're new uh, to the site, 
after your first $12 purchase, if you send an email to uh, customer service at WagerTalk, we will take and give you $50 sign up bonus. After your first $12 purchase, just email us your uh, name and your user name and we will put $50 in your account for you to use however you would like. That's just our way of saying thank you for joining the Wager Talk team. He's Brian Leonard and Marco D'Angelo. Be sure to check out all the other videos available this week at wagertalk.com.